So good afternoon, Dave. Good afternoon. Great to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, would you like to give us a little bit of a flavour of who you are? Yes. Yeah. So uh, David Lewis. I am the former Deputy Chief Constable of Dorset and also of Devon and Cornwall Police. So 30 years in the police, uh, but left policing in 2020 and have a portfolio of, of activities now, which include some charity work, some non-executive director work, some consultancy uh, and other bits of leadership development. Great, lovely, thank you. And you're going to be kindly chairing yes. our workshop in March on responsible leadership. Um, I just have a few questions yeah. that I'd love to ask you uh, in relation to that. So the first question is, what do you understand by the concept of putting on your own oxygen mask before seeing to the needs of others? So I really like that as an analogy, um, because I think it's important to recognise that if you aren't in good shape yourself, then there's no way in which you can help others around you. And I think that is on a number of levels. So first of all, the, the, the common sense level of if, if you aren't well or coping, then you are going to struggle to be able to do your job effectively, to put support in for other people. Uh, but it also works on a role modelling level as well, uh, so that if you are seen to be somebody who looks after their own well-being uh, and takes time to do that, then that encourages and supports others in, in doing so themselves. So uh, I, I think it's a key concept uh, and one perhaps we don't take enough cognizance of. Super. Yes, absolutely. And that, that piece about giving yourself permission. Absolutely. Uh, guess, yeah, 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 is yeah, yeah. Is so second question, mm -hmm. how do you ensure that responsible leadership was the golden thread that ran through your working life, if indeed it was? <laughs> <laughs> so the if indeed it was is a really good challenge because I've listened to so many leaders talk about the fact that they, they thought they could cope with stress and pressure, that they were working through it and, you know, they were broad-shouldered and able to cope and at the end of it all um, you often hear these stories of, of collapse and often it's not the major thing it's the final straw that, that just breaks the camel's back and people suddenly find themselves struggling so I think I wasn't immune to that way of thinking I think I also would have said actually oh, I'm quite good at stress uh, but there were a, a few things that I did do I think I was good at recognizing my own stresses and uh, so the things that made me stressed in the way my body and particularly my body reacted so I I know that I would get knotted up and I would feel tension all across the top of my back if I was under stress uh, I knew that um, it would come out in my dreams I'd have anxiety dreams if I was really stressed um, and those would be signals to me to do something about it and I sought help a couple of times when I was in that sort of situation just to, to talk things through with people and say actually I could do with some help here working through how do I manage this pressurized time stressful time and then I think also it was important to me to put things around me that helped me so I often talk certainly on Windsor programs about four F's so for me uh, fitness I'm not the fittest person in the world but I do think it's important to Untake some activity, get out. I know you're a keen dog walker. I am a keen dog down walker. Down yeah. <laughs> yeah, get down the beach, but also a bit of gym uh, and other exercise that is important. Friends, finding a way of getting out of your workplace and just doing something else, being somewhere else was really important to me. And uh, and that would often just take me completely away from the problems that I was suffering perhaps in work. For me, faith is important. That sense of something outside of oneself that both provides comfort and perspective is important and then family you know my family are both uh, uh, tremendous support and great levelers so and, and to them you know I'm just Dave or dad and uh, and actually that's a great place to be uh, it takes you again out of the workplace so Lovely. those things are good for them. Super thank you and of course the, the number of different masks that we wear yes and the number of different hats that we wear exactly. as well yeah and, and it's yeah. sort of juggling yes those. there's always juggling yeah. A challenge, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And on to our final question, mm -hmm. actually. As leaders, mm -hmm. how might we best model self-care in order to enable individuals and teams to flourish? Now, you've, you've partly answered that in your last question. Is there anything else that you Yeah, so I think, so the things I would add were that as leaders, I think it's important to talk about it. 
so to be open and to say you know either I'm finding this difficult or and sometimes actually to be honest and say oh, I've, I've sought help or make sure that people recognize that you're not some super hero uh, that actually which I think most must have understood anyway but that actually you are a, a normal person coping with difficult things and to allow that not to wear it on your sleeve all the time but to be open and frank secondly as leaders I think we've a duty to put uh, systems in place and processes and make sure that there is the right support for people in the organization sure. um, and make sure that those things are available to people and then I think thirdly to encourage people to take them up and, and also to act as a um, act as a critical friend so if you see someone and you say I, I think you, you know you are under a lot of pressure and you need to take time out or you know, you could do with seeking some support or, or lending them some support. All of those things are, are things as a leader. I think we should be doing, um, you know, with peers, with people who work for us, but with the uh, people who we work for as well. Yeah. So that we've taken that responsibility seriously as leaders, I think is important. Thank you. I, I've added another question Have that you? I haven't shared with you. <laughs> um, your hopes. What are your hopes for this workshop for those who attend? Um I hope that people will, um, first of all, find a safe place in which they will be able to discuss some challenging issues with like-minded people and that through doing so, that they will come away with ideas, opportunities, inspiration um, to, to do more, both for themselves and for their organisation. Brilliant. Dave, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you.